Good morning. I'm Leo Michelle, Senior Fellow with the Atlantic Council's Transatlantic Security Initiative and the Skokoff Center for Strategy and Security. Welcome to a discussion with Asa Pulkinen, Permanent Secretary of the Finnish Ministry of Defense. First, a few words about the Scowcroft Center. The center honors the legacy of General Brent Scowcroft, his ethos of building nonpartisan support for U.S. national security policy, employing U.S. leadership in a way that maximizes effective cooperation with our allies and partners, and his dedication to mentoring the next generation of leaders. The Transatlantic Security Initiative applies this ethos today as it seeks sustainable nonpartisan strategies to address the many challenges facing our North Atlantic Alliance, its members and partners. And we thank the Finnish Ministry of Defense for its long-standing and intense cooperation with all of our Atlantic Council team. Today's webinar takes place at a perilous time for European security and indeed for global security and the situation is changing even as we are speaking. Just a few key points. The Kremlin has arrayed highly capable military forces on a scale unprecedented in Europe since World War II, along Ukraine's borders with Russia, Belarus, and occupied Crimea. Yesterday, President Putin signed a decree recognizing the independence of the so-called Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republics, and additional Russian forces are moving into those regions. The United States allies and partners have sought through bilateral and multilateral channels to de-escalate and resolve this crisis through diplomatic means, but they also have made clear they will impose swift, significant, and unprecedented economic costs if Russia further invades Ukraine and first steps in that process are underway. Meanwhile, to strengthen deterrence and collective defense, an additional 6,000 American service members have been deployed to Romania, Poland, and Germany, and other allies may boost their forces along NATO's eastern flank. Finland's history with Russia and their shared 830-mile border have led successive governments to develop a multifaceted approach to defense and security. In addition to its significant national military capabilities and principles of what it calls a comprehensive national defense, Finland maintains an array of international defense cooperation. Finland enjoys enhanced opportunities partner status with NATO and has contributed in important ways to NATO operations. It also participates actively in EU defense structures and crisis management operations and has been a long-standing advocate of a close and pragmatic relationship between the EU and NATO. And in recent years, Finland has strengthened bilateral and trilateral defense ties with the United States and Sweden, as well as regional forests such as Nordefco. To discuss these subjects, I'm honored to welcome my friend, Asa Polkinen. Secretary Polkinen has served as permanent secretary, the number two position in the Finnish Ministry of Defense since January 1 of this year. He previously served as director general of the MOD's Defense Policy Department actually the second time that he has held that position. And importantly, from 2016 to 2020, he was the Director General of the EU military staff. Secretary Pukkanen joined the Finnish Armed Forces in 1977, I believe, rising to the rank of Lieutenant General, having served among other assignments as a Brigade Commander and as an Assistant Chief of Staff in the Defense Command. A bit of housekeeping, this, this event is on the record. I encourage you to follow the discussion on Twitter by following at AC Scowcroft and at Atlantic Council. To join the conversation and ask questions of Secretary Pulkinen, please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen on Zoom or tweet your questions using at AC Scowcroft. Isa, if I may, this is your chance to make some opening remarks. Thank, thank you, thank you, Leo, indeed, for your extremely kind introductory remarks. I just recognize how, how old I am. Mm -hmm. uh, our 
friendship with Leo uh, is, a, is, a, is a long one. I, I met uh, Leo first time in, in Geneva in 1995, as I was a postgraduate student in Geneva University. I was still a young and, 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 and promising, promising a mid-career officer. Neither I'm young nor promising anymore, but anyway, still active, but, but in that way. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely pleased that uh, Leo, you will, you will moderate this uh, discussion this morning. So that is the positive side uh, of my story today. Uh, when I was watching TV yesterday evening, uh, Finnish time, and, and saw uh, President Putin and his speech, or listened to his speech, I thought that uh, tomorrow, in other words, today might not be the best day in my life. And unfortunately, <laughs> I was right. Uh, we have had a number of the governmental meetings today, of course, and, and uh, the president of the Republic of Finland, Mr. Sauli Niinistö, had a press conference at noon, uh, which was uh, very well received. And of course, we take the situation very seriously at the moment. As we all know, situation is volatile. Like everyone else, we are following um, it with uh, grave concern. President Putin's decision to recognize the so-called independence of uh, the Luhansk and Do Donetsk uh, separatist uh, regions uh, was a significant moment. It uh, follows the playbook we have seen uh, in Abkhazia and in South Ossetia. Putin clearly questions Ukraine's existence and as a sovereign state. This makes the situation very dangerous. His speech on Monday was based on a highly, highly emotional historical narrative. There is more, more in play than poor military uh, considerations. I still hope that common sense would be prevail and there would be a, a diplomatic solution. This is obviously now more difficult after what happened yesterday. As long as we cannot rule out military escalation, my job as a permanent secretary in the Ministry of Finland in Helsinki is always to be prepared for the worst. There is no, I underline, no direct military threat to Finland at the moment. Our operating environment remains tense and unpredictable, but that is something we have uh, got used to during centuries already with, uh, with, uh, in the neighborhood of Russia. From our perspective, the increased US and NATO presence in the region has enhanced stability. Of course, Russia's demands concerning security guarantees and European security architecture would also affect Finland. One thing we, uh, we must learn to live with, uh, with is the constant hybrid influencing that challenges our societies. In Finland, we rely on a model of uh, comprehensive security that brings together all the government tools, as well as industry, civil society, and the general population. To me, this is the only way to build resilience against external threats. Before the discussion, I only want to make three free points. First, each country is free to take decision, decisions on uh, their foreign and security policy. Debates on spheres of influence uh, belong to history books. The open door policy of NATO should not be questioned. Second, one cannot stress too much the importance of uh, transatlantic unity. The US has a big role to play in ensuring coordination among allies and partners. And the administration has made a great effort to this end. US, NATO and EU should not continue, should continue to work shoulder to shoulder and react firmly when needed. Let's also make sure we bring our own message forward and not only react to Russians initiatives. Thirdly, as a member of uh, the Western community, Finland plays its role by maintaining a strong national defense and working with its partners to ensure the security and stability of the Baltic Sea region and the high north. 
I would like to thank the US for excellent bilateral cooperation, which has the potential to take even further steps in uh, the coming years. With that, I'm happy to take your questions. Thank you, Leo. Thank you, Asa. Uh, it's an excellent and a very important statement. If I may, then let me draw you out on a, on a few points. And then um, with the help of the Atlantic Council staff, I'll be uh, relaying some of the questions from our audience. From your defense perspective, how do you assess Russia's military posture around Ukraine? What do you see as particularly noteworthy or perhaps even surprising in the way Russian forces have been deployed? Uh, what are your thoughts about Ukraine's capabilities to resist the further Russian invasion? Uh, thank you, thank you, Leo. Excellent questions. Uh, Russia actually has deployed a significant number of troops uh, in the neighborhood of, of uh, Ukraine. And uh, it has all the military tools possible available for action they decide. That will not exclude a massive uh, attack uh, uh, to, to Kiev or any part of the, of the, of the, of the Ukraine. So they, their mobility, their firepower, uh, their capabilities are the highest possible uh, in uh, in the Russian among the Russian, uh, Russian, uh, Russian armed forces. Um, I would say surprise. You asked. Uh, perhaps the surprise has been that they don't react when they when we expected them to react. They have the capability to 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 react already more than one month ago. But they gradually started to build up their capabilities to that end we, 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 see, to, we see today. And I would say that, that, is, that is in a way a surprise. That is a different compared to 2014 Crimea. It's, it's, it's different of the concept of the, let me say, uh, frozen conflicts. It's really a preparation for the massive use of, use of force, as we have seen. And, and we cannot rule out, rule out anything. And uh, I have quite a gloomy picture what happens uh, in days and weeks to come. And really, the first step has now taken, and, and uh, next step, we can just wait, wait for that. What that will be, we will, we will see. On Ukraine's capabilities, uh, of course, Ukraine of today is different of that of 2014. Uh, I would say that has... Uh, soft and hard elements, soft that they are more prepared to defend their country compared to the situation eight years ago. Uh, also, the military capability is significantly better to, to defend the country. Whether that will be enough to deter, that is another question. But certainly, uh, militarily spoken, uh, Ukraine will not be an easy target, even, even for the massive uh, Russian, Russian attack. That's my short answer. Thank you, Leo. Thank you, Isa. Um, following up on that a little bit, Finland became one of NATO's six enhanced opportunities partners at the 2014 Whale Summit. And that took place, we know, in, in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, including its annexation of Crimea earlier uh, that year. Is it fair to say that the EOP has significantly improved your capability to understand events on the ground in the current crisis and perhaps even assist NATO's thinking on how to respond. And along those lines, how has the European Center of Excellence on countering hybrid threats, which Finland uh, created several years ago uh, in Helsinki, uh, how has that center been involved uh, in the current crisis? Thank you, thank you, Leo. On the our EOP status in NATO, born in 2016, yes, indeed, it has enhanced our capability to to, to work better together with NATO. Uh, I would say that the uh, it has opened a completely new avenue of approach to 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 discuss with NATO 
at the political level, but also at the military level. And, and I would say that we have made also NATO aware of our capabilities, mm. that Finland is not a military vacuum, but really we are capable and willing to defend, uh, defend our country if needed. The confliction, cooperation, all these things has significantly improved. We should not also forget that Finland and Sweden are very close together and, and together to EOP partners uh, is a strong deterrence factor in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the North and also support NATO's effort to stabilize uh, the, the Baltic Sea region. On, on hybrid center of excellence, I, uh, I, I feel a little bit honesty on, on the establishment of that hybrid center because uh, going back to, to 2013-14 when the uh, Baltic states have their different uh, uh, centers of excellencies, we, we start thinking how Finland could, uh, could contribute also uh, the security via establishing uh, the, the, the hybrid center or kind of the center of excellence. And it was very obvious that due to our comprehensive approach to security, we could bring added value value by bringing something that reflects the the idea of the of the of the of the comprehensive security and 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 it was quite natural that the hybrid center of excellence then was was it was established in the full harm harmony uh, with the uh, baltic states uh, centers of excellence so that there is a lot of dynamics baltic uh, finnish dynamics in 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 in, in these centers uh, the hybrid set of excellence provides a, a excellent, an excellent platform to, to discuss the, the hybrid here in, in, the, in the very multinational composition. Also, it's, uh, it directly and indirectly supports our effort, efforts in the defense administration to, 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 to have a better understanding of, uh, of the very nature of the, of the hybrid threat. So, uh, in my view, it has been an investment the center of excellence for the for the for the in, in global terms uh, uh, and also uh, supports uh, our efforts to secure our own own country thank you uh, prime minister marin said i believe it was nine years uh, nine days ago seems like nine years <laughs> that finland could provide financial aid to ukraine if it were attacked but that the, the situation is more complicated with regard to arms exports. And looking at the news reports from um, Helsinki this morning, members of the parliament uh, appear divided on what to do. Could you just uh, kind of summarize for us what the current thinking is in Helsinki, uh, the limitations as well, uh, with regard to providing military assistance to Ukraine which I believe um, government officials, perhaps President Ninistu, have confirmed that the request uh, has been made. Thank you. Thank you, Leo. That is an excellent question. And, and uh, it will not surprise you that we discussed that issue with the government uh, this morning. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, the very fair and sincere intention is to, to, to find out the way to provide support, to, uh, to better support to Ukraine. In terms of financing, uh, I think yes, indeed, we we have already uh, taken decisions to support uh, support Ukraine, but uh, today we are seeking opportunities to to do it even um, even in such a way that provide more flexibility to the use of use of uh, use of money for different purposes, and we we may follow the model of uh, Sweden and Norway to be decided mm. later. But certainly a considerable uh, financial support uh, government is of that opinion should be given to Ukraine. Of course, arms uh, export is, uh, is another issue where actually uh, there are governmental policies uh, that provide some restrictions. Uh, traditionally, we have been quite conservative on, on arms exports. And, and of course, we don't have a very strong and big uh, defense industry, uh, which has not pushed us actually to that in very very much however uh, we we try to find out uh, a way how to how to support uh, support uh, constructively ukraine as well uh, of course i mean uh, given that the we don't have the extra 
weapons or, 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 or gear here in, in Finland available. I mean, we have a huge, big, big uh, army, 280,000 if we mobilize all of them. So the extra, extra, um, let me say, equipment is very difficult to, to find out. However, there are some processes which uh, we, we, we may look a little bit uh, closer uh, and, and uh, look actually uh, how much flexibility government will have in future to to uh, to a little bit adapt uh, their policies but uh, but of course we are working in the in ministry of defense and defense forces uh, very in a very hard manner in order to find out the way to 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 support provide at least some some type of support uh, to 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 Ukraine armed forces as well thank you isa uh, we watched with interest here uh, an interview that President Nisto did with CNN on Sunday. And he said then that he had observed what he called a different kind of behavior in President Putin, uh, a desire to be and, and appear to be very divisive or decisive, I'm sorry, very decisive to use President Nisto's words. Hmm. In, in the same interview, I asked about Finland's position uh, the president said, let me just quote him verbatim here. He said, we are not afraid. Actually, the situation along the Finnish border and in the Baltic Sea area is quite peaceful. We are not afraid of Russian tanks suddenly crossing the Finnish border, unquote. That said, and you made a similar statement in your introductory remarks. How does the further Russian military aggression against Ukraine accompanied by other aspects of hybrid warfare, plus the imposition of Western sanctions and the likely Russian counter sanctions. How does that impact the security and stability of the Nordic Baltic region? Mm -hmm. uh, that is one of, one, one of the issues I have in, in, in my mind almost every day, ever since the, when the uh, when the crisis broke out in, in, in Ukraine. We, we witnessed some hybrid influence in, uh, in 2015-2016 in terms of uh, having um, uh, third country citizens trying to, 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 to come to Finland uh, across our northern borders, a similar situation, similar situation with, with Norway. Uh, and and uh, it was very obvious a state sponsored action action of course we don't 100 percent know so that we know that uh, there are tools that can be used okay so as, as pseudo political will exist uh, and 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 certainly the hybrid influencing is something something we we look very carefully here in, in inside the Finnish different administrations and and inside the society society uh, but I do believe and do hope that that we are we are dealt differently compared to 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 to, to Ukraine. Uh, you never have a one hundred percent guarantee, but uh, I I would say that at least in the short term there is no reason for for our eastern neighbor to react against Finland in a similar way as yeah, they have done in in Ukraine. But uh, of course. In short term, like said by 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 myself and, and our president, uh, no uh, risk. Uh, we 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 cannot see any military movement uh, close to our borders. Uh, no immediate threat or risk. But the question is that uh, what will be the long term uh, impact of uh, or influence of, of Ukraine case for Europe and of course for for Finland. It remains to be seen, but the uh, but the spheres of uh, of influence, spheres of uh, interests, they have a particular very negative uh, connotation in Finland that goes back to the time prior to the Winter War, and 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 of course we are looking on very high the changes in 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 in, uh, in situation close to close to our, our neighborhood, but uh, but uh, we do hope. Of course, that there will be a peaceful solution for the for the Ukraine 
uh, which have no harm for the for the future of the very well is established uh, European uh, security architecture that has been prevailing since since a long time. Uh, but uh, that remains to be seen. Like I said already, I I have to be prepared for the worst, for the worst case scenario here in, in the defense. But uh, for time being, situation is as as I described. Thank you. Um, let me ask one more question for now. I may have come back into the discussion later, but um, I, I'm then going to look at the chat and, and the Atlantic Council team will help me put together or help relay some of the questions from our audience. But a, a final question that I'd like to pose, if I may, regarding US-Finnish defense cooperation. We've seen uh, two important developments this month. Finland, as I understand it, has finalized now its $9.4 billion purchase of 64 Lockheed Martin F-35s and their support services associated with that, uh, signing a letter of offer and acceptance that calls for those jets to be delivered before the end of 2030. Uh, in a separate agreement, uh, also I believe this month, two types of guided rocket munitions uh, uh, have been ordered that will significantly improve the performance and extend the range of Finnish heavy multiple rocket launchers. Could you say a little bit about the domestic and the international reaction, uh, for example, from your neighbor to the east, if there has been uh, such reaction uh, to those announcements? Well, Leo, I would say that the, uh, there was, it was a coincidence that the decision on the uh, replacement of F-18 to F-35 was taken in December. That was not planned to be take place at the same time as the crisis <laughs> broke out in, 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 in Ukraine. But what was important was that this decision was taken timely, as planned. We had almost, you know, very precise plan week by week how to, how to introduce that to the government and, and uh, and of course, uh, how the process was 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 run was was really uh, done very carefully, and and everything went like we had planned, and that was a a, a significantly important decision. Uh, uh, of course, F thirty five was a logical uh, uh, continuation of uh, of our cooperation with uh, with the US, and and uh, like was said by by my minister uh, country like Finland given the security environment has to has to buy the best possible product for our purposes and I think we did it uh, all the offers were, were were excellent but we we picked the one actually that fits the best to our, our requirements uh, no reactions no negative reactions so far. On the contrary, I would say it has been recognized uh, both in West and perhaps not that much in East, but at least in in in, in West in, in a very positive manner. Uh, as far as the uh, guided rockets are concerned, I mean uh, it fits very well the same concept as as F-18. Uh, replacement so that we need to have a uh, extended range capability we have a big country and not that big number of troops but we need to have a uh, good firepower ground to ground air to ground air to air and and uh, that fit very well to these purposes we had a reaction uh, a year ago prompted by the by the russian embassy on the on the on the guided rockets which was a bit surprise for me because our uh, uh, defense concept is is very defensive but we are exclusively prepared to defend our country inside of our borders how should anyone actually have a negative uh, reaction on, on on our weapon systems but like i said uh, we we have made our, our choices already and we need to continue. We need to have uh, the high-end capabilities and we need to have a 
a very well motivated uh, reservist, reservist, I mean, kind of the soft power uh, tool, I mean, not, not so soft power, but, uh, but really based on, 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 on the highly motivated young men and women who are, who are, who are prepared to, to defend Finland uh, also during the different times. And I think we need to, to, to maintain that balance. We need the high-end capabilities and we need to, to conscription to support our, our defense. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. I'm, we've uh, had a lot of reaction, not surprisingly, uh, from our audience here. And you won't be surprised by some of these questions. Um, some um, are along the same themes. So uh, let me ask you one that um, other Finnish officials have been asked to respond to, and I'm sure it comes as no surprise to you. Uh, and Jean Germanovich, uh, has posed one, which I think frames it the way a lot of the other questions seem to as well. He asks, what will be the main factors you will consider in terms of your future relationship with NATO? <laughs> next, next question, please. <laughs> no, no, quite seriously. Uh, what has been interesting uh, to observe that the uh, during the past decades, the support uh, to NATO, uh, joining the NATO, uh, aligning with, with NATO has been 20-22%, not higher, not lower. Uh, and today's figures are different, are different um, in such a way that less than 50% of the uh, Finnish uh, citizens uh, are against the Finnish membership in NATO. That is a quite a quite a change in, in in opinion. Direct support is somewhere close to 30 percent, perhaps a little bit less or a little bit over. Over, but but certainly uh, I haven't seen uh, in my career such a change in in such a short period uh, ever. Uh, what that would mean, of course, we have our governmental policy, open door policy vis-a-vis -vis NATO, uh, which is uh, which is uh, quite different of that of, of Sweden, for example. We have since late 1990s stated that we we improve our interoperability in order to apply a defense capabilities in order to be prepared to apply. The membership in military alliance, in other words, NATO, if if so so decided, uh, it's so-called NATO option, which is not an option as such, but it is the uh, freedom for Finland to 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 send a letter to Brussels and to to NATO NATO capitals, um, if we so so consider. Uh, it is quite obvious that the uh, debate in, in Finland will start now. It has already started. Uh, uh, I don't know what will be the end, but I, we cannot rule out that the NATO question will be one of the major subjects in during the governmental elections that will take place next year in, in, in winter. I, I don't know, but, uh, but uh, it, it, it is possible. So that uh, I would say it depends very much how the how the Finns think, think and of course I mean we need to listen our our, our citizens and and, and 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 certainly whether Finland is is going to to revise her policies on 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 the military non alignment uh, that will be seen but at the moment the the official policy is that uh, well we don't see see that need at the moment but we maintain the door open from our side thank you though. Thank you. One of the other uh, perhaps expected questions, and let me just um, pose it to you this way, because several people have asked it. It essentially comes down to, to this. Um, let's see, Fritz Erbach posed the question this way. Uh, could Finland be a model for the status of the Ukraine, of Ukraine, not the Ukraine, pardon me, uh, between NATO uh, and Russia? The question of this Finnish model. Yeah, you, you are you are very. <laughs> <polite>. <laughs> uh, 
uh, you are extremely polite uh, politely you're my friend you don't I don't uh, use the F word you don't use the 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 the, the name of Finland is here uh, of Deutsch Finlandization that was actually uh, not uh, not invented by Finns but for the outside to describe actually how Finland uh, dealt her relationship with Soviet Union during the Cold War era uh, and I think has a really bad connotation in, in, in Finland uh, because situation was different and, and uh, uh, after the call, after the Second World War we were under the pressure of the of the Soviet Union and we tried to preserve or, or gain our neutrality and, and, and we we paid a high price to, to Russians they have an influence on uh, our, our domestic politics even even uh, and uh, we were very lucky that the Cold War actually really ended like it ended uh, and, and the Soviet Union disappeared so I I would say that it is not a model to be copied by by anyone it was the the time we were living and it was a part of the Finnish survival game which was actually successful if I look backwards, but uh, I, I, I wouldn't say that it was a, a, a model which uh, should be copied by, by, by anyone. I mean, Ukraine is a sovereign country and has an equal right to, to, uh, to choose her defense and security uh, framework as he wish. Nobody should have anything to, to say on that, like, unlike it is now, now happening. Thank you. So um, let me pose, and, and a few others have posed the question, let me frame it the way uh, Walt Slocum has. Walt Slocum, whom you know well, former Undersecretary of Defense for Policy and uh, has been a uh, very, very important actor and, and um, on the board of the, of the Atlantic Council. Do you expect Russia, he asks, do you expect Russia to cut off or limit gas supplies to Finland and is Finland ready for that if it were to happen? Of course, the question is very speculative, but, uh, but if and when sanctions will be posed uh, against uh, Russia, they will impose counter sanctions. That is very, very obvious. And our framework, framework for sanctions will be, of course, European Union. We, we are united and, and we stick to EU policies and, and, and of course we counter uh, the counter sanctions to, 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 to or see the counter uh, sanctions through the EU, EU classes to put it that way. Uh, our energy depend, dependence on, on, on Russia is, is not that high anymore. Uh, we oil it's, it's 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 a critical gas not but uh i would say that we could get uh, the supplies elsewhere if, if needed so that our resilience is 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 better than it 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 it, it used to be we have taken that into account uh, for a long time it's quite interesting that uh, of course finland had suffered quite a lot of the sanctions already imposed by the european union uh, and the, and the, there was a time where actually we had a foreign trade that was 20% of the overall foreign trade with, uh, with, with all the countries globally, with Russia or Soviet Union. Today is, is less than 5%. It's less than we have with Estonia. But we have paid quite, quite, a, quite a price because, because whenever the situation is, is better between the West and Russia, it will, it will have a positive impact on our economies. But I, I think that we stand ready to support the sanctions, whatsoever they will be, even hard ones, because now clearly the issues, issue is the future about the Europe. It's the future, not only the future of Ukraine, but future of, of Europe, Europe that is at stake. Thank you. Thank you, Isa. Uh, Another member of our audience, uh, Dave Oswald, uh, calls attention to something that we haven't mentioned specifically yet. You haven't. And that is, how will Russian troop deployments to Belarus affect Finland's defense posture, if at all? 
this is an element that um, we've watched with uh, uh, with a lot of interest. Uh, thank you, Leo. I, w I would say that the situation uh, uh, was a similar, the very same. It was after the uh, the uh, illegal annexation of Crimea. We started to think uh, what might be the indirect impact on the security in Baltic Sea, and and we saw it. It was quite heavy, and and now it will be multiplied by the obvious Russian presence and, of course, the change of, of uh, Belarus policy vis-a-vis -vis nuclear weapons. Uh, and it will go, of course, through, through NATO. The importance of, of NATO and US to stabilize the Baltic Sea region is, is very obvious. And I would say that the uh, change in status of Belarus will have a negative impact of, of that stability. That, that, is, that is very clear. And it, that, that sense has a negative impact on on, on Finnish security, but it's not a direct military threat, to put it that way. Thank you. Very good. And, and he said in, in your answer, you actually uh, answered uh, some other questions that we received that asked for a little bit more on the Baltic, and, uh, and uh, that, so that was very helpful. Um, there's a, uh, there are a couple of general questions about your view of what the Western response has been to date and, and, and the way things are playing out. Once again, we do understand that uh, the developments are changing even as we're holding the session. Uh, mm. But I think Doug Zakheim, another uh, former uh, senior Defense Department official uh, who's been uh, uh, an active commentator on military and security affairs uh, since leaving government, asks, whether or not you think the West is doing enough in light of uh, Putin's latest action. Uh, in general, you already mentioned what Finland is considering uh, about uh, military assistance. Do you think that there should be ramped up military support for Ukraine now? Do you have other suggestions on what you'd like to see, not only Finland, but uh, kind of friendly advice to, to allies and partners, uh, the US, France, uh, Germany, and, uh, and the UK. Uh, because as uh, Dozakhan points out, Finland does understand Russia as well as, if not better than anyone. <laughs> and in mm -hmm. fact, uh, Dov mm -hmm. writes, your, your president has told me he meets with Putin twice yearly. So um, with, what's your perspective on this? Well, that's a complicated, complicated uh, package of, of different issues. And, and of course, the challenge is that uh, the initiative is in the hands of, of Russians. And they use uh, uh, their military capabilities to increase the pressure. And, and uh, having, having a response, of course, on a massive threat of the use of the, of the, of the weapons, I mean, uh, it's, it's very difficult. Of course, the sanctions are the means, but uh, then the timing. When, the, when, when one should impose the sanctions, I mean, should we, should we do it in advance, like suggested someone, or, or, or just timing when something happens, or, or later on? And I think that debate is now ongoing, ongoing, uh, at least inside the European Union. I am not very familiar, although I have some EU background, but of course, uh, I, I don't know what, what is happening, but I, they are pre preparing a package which might be quite a, quite a strong one, hopefully. Because the point is that, uh, you know, Leo, as I know, that the uh, Russians despise weakness. They, they, they respect Finland because Finland has been in the history, although being a small country, but strong. We were the only one actually during the winter war time, 1931-9, that defended on our own country. And we, we paid quite a bill, actually. Uh, we lost 10% uh, of our territory. We lost uh, dozens of thousands of, of, of our, 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 our people, but we, we remained uh, independent. independent. That was the ultimate goal. So, uh, but how to show, how to show that you are determined 
how to show how you are strong when you cannot uh, in a similar way to respond as Russians have done on the visa of Ukraine. It is, it is very obvious that some reaction, reactions from the West will be needed that is on, on, ongoing already to strengthen the uh, NATO's defense and of course US engagement uh, close to close to uh, close to eastern borders, NATO's eastern borders. Uh, but uh, but that once again that is that is reactive. Uh, so uh, I don't have very clear answers to your question questions, but uh, but certainly if we don't react forcefully to put it that way, we will give a signal to to Russia that they can they can continue their policies and activities like they have done with the Russia, also perhaps in the other parts of the Europe, not only not, not only in, in Ukraine, but somewhere somewhere else. That's my 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 answer. And um, you may, or I mentioned before, uh, I gave a few examples of the the different forma or fora for international uh, defense cooperation that uh, Finland has um, joined or established in recent years. As one of our audience members points out, Finland is a member, as is Sweden, in the UK-led Joint Expeditionary Force. Do you think that uh, this force may have a role to play in circumstances um, prevailing now? Thank you, Leo. It's, this is a very timely question because we have uh, we have uh, today concluded the chef ministerial in in London. My minister is 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 coming back this evening to a two days meeting, and of course, joint expeditionary force uh, when it was established quite some years ago, uh, we saw it a little bit differently. Uh, we we thought that it might be a good framework for crisis management humanitarian these type of operations and and we didn't pay too attention too much attention to the fact that actually there's the strongest European military power leading that leading that uh, that uh, uh, initiative organization uh, and of course today we we need to think that it has a strong deterrence uh, capability in build. Uh, but the key question will be how to how to adapt it to our current situation, because the Finland policy has been uh, we are part of the West, and we will try to show that we are we are part of the West also militarily. But we wouldn't like to provoke Russians. We we have our geography. We have uh, like we said 800 and. 43 miles. I don't know. I'm not, not so good in miles, common border. But to have that many miles of border is, is better than have no border with Russians. So that we we, we need to, to be very, very careful when when we consider our our activities activities to be on the one side, we need to be supportive. This is a Good framework to the expeditionary forces. All these eleven countries. I mean, they are close, close partners. Sweden is there as well, uh, led by UK, uh, which we need to work together. But how to then to maneuver is a different different issue. Issue, issue given the, the the our geography and our situation here in the high north. Thank you. Well, perhaps trying to narrow the, the scope of the, the preceding question a little bit more. Um, some of our participants have asked, and, and it's a very good question, how can Finland strengthen its support of the Baltics in particular? This is especially after Putin's speech last night. And um, as I recall, during his CNN interview, President Nenisto, uh, when he was describing how he has noticed this changed behavior, uh, with President Putin mentioned that when he restated the importance of, that Finland attaches to its sovereignty, protecting its sovereignty, 
Mr. Putin apparently formally read the list of, uh, of Russian demands that's been made. And as you know, one of those demands um, has been that uh, NATO basically withdraw uh, the military presence um, uh, and return to the, the military presence, which is virtually none uh, in or none um, of 1997. Basically, a, mm -hmm. a, a mm -hmm. retreat from the um, from the Baltics, from Poland, etc. So, uh, again, back to the question: How can, <clears throat> pardon me, how can Finland strengthen its support uh, uh, for the Baltics? Yeah, thank you, Leo. It goes without saying that the security of the Baltic state is is crucial, crucially important for the for the Finnish security as well. The stronger the defense of Baltic states is the better it is also for the for the Finnish, Finnish security. That's very clear. Uh, Baltic states are, are members of EU and NATO. And of course, on NATO issues, we don't have too much to say. NATO is 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 their security guarantee. But that will not prevent us to, to work closely with the Baltic countries. Of course, Estonians are our, our brothers, to put it that way. In, in many ways, and, and we work very closely with, with the Estonians. Uh, also on, on, on defense-related issues, going for the procurement on a on, on, on number of the issues issues we have done together in the past. Actually, we, we contributed to the training and education of the Estonian NCOs and officers uh, in, in 19, 1990s already, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but if I look from the security policy point of view, I would say that the framework is rather EU. And then as a member of the of the EU, we have also some responsibilities. Uh, uh, they are famous 222 and 42.7 articles uh, 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 from Lisbon Treaty that are give the obligations to, to, uh, to EU member states to provide support or support uh, other countries if needed. Uh, but that discussion has never went very deep, actually, what that may may mean in, in practical terms. Uh, so in the in the in the in the current uh, current uh, during prevailing circumstances, uh, our dialogue with Estonia and Baltic states is, is intensified. We have a regular contact with them. And, and uh, we, we seek all the opportunities to, uh, to deepen our bilateral, trilateral uh, defense cooperation. And, and of course, the limitation is, is, is the fact that we are not the ally, ally uh, that provides some, some hinders on, 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 on military field, but, uh, but certainly, certainly, uh, certainly uh, like I mentioned, the uh, security and, and, and defense of Baltic states is, is important for Finland. Uh, thanks, Asa. Uh, we have a few minutes left. I'm going to uh, give our audience a, a chance if there are uh, additional questions with regard to Russia, Ukraine, and, and so forth. But uh, you've mentioned the EU. Uh, recalling your recent service as Director General of the EU military staff, I wanted to ask you a, a couple of brief questions. Have you seen some practical follow-up from the US-EU June summit decision to launch an EU-US dialogue on security and defense? Broad question. And then more specifically, how do you see the impact of President Macron's recent decision to withdraw French troops from Mali on the EU training mission there? Do you think that this development, these developments in Mali, may lead to a more general reluctance within the EU to undertake military missions in Africa? Yeah, thanks, Leo. On, on uh, US-EU, uh, I, I was one of those who were strong advocates to strengthen the, the ties between the European Union and, and uh, and U.S. during a period of time I spent uh, spent in, in in Brussels, and 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 certainly I do welcome uh, that there is a dialogue also also established uh, between uh, between U.S. and EU 
you, that's important. It is mutually beneficial, and I do hope that that will be deepened. And, and uh, it's a complicated issue, and we, we might need another hour to, to, to talk on that topics. But but certainly, I have followed it from the distance, and and uh, and, and, and certainly do go, do welcome all the all the developments already made, uh, and also to to help the UN's uh, defense industries to, to work closer with the European partners and also with the, with, with the Commission. That, that goes without saying that that's, that's important because EU is an, an actor on capabilities, can support the development of capabilities to be used for different purposes, not exclusively for EU, but also for the, for the NATO because the capabilities are, are, are owned by nations. On, on Mali, uh, it has been I was over three years a, a commander of the uh, EU training missions in Africa, in Mali Central African Republic, and I in, 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 in Somalia, and I, I still know relatively well well the situation. Uh, I'm, I'm concerned. Uh, I'm concerned because, because really uh, the French military contribution is of critical importance uh, uh, to, to maintain a fragile stability in uh, in in the Sahel region. Uh, if they are pulled out from the Mali, it will be more complicated to to to, to continue similar way they have done with the with the Parka. Uh, the Parkan operation during my time it was the fundamental prerequisite for both for the UN-led Minus Minusma operation and also for the EU training mission. And that will disappear. That will have a negative impact on on also other other engagements. So that I do hope that there will be found a solution, solution constructive solution with uh, with Malians Malians to, to 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 continue and maintain also the French presence in in, in Mali. Thank you. Thank you. We just have a couple minutes left. I want to give you. You've touched upon this, but give you one and the final chance and then realizing this is a little bit outside of your area of responsibility, Hans Benedict, whom you know, uh, ask whether or not your desire not to provoke Russia impact Finland's willingness to sanction Russia. And how far are you prepared to, prepare to go with economic sanctions? Yeah. Tough question, but you have a, a minute or so to respond. Yeah, I, I think that there, one need to distinguish what we mean by provocation. I, I mean by provocation uh, in, in military terms. Uh, and uh, that's something we try to, to avoid. But in terms of the sanctions, we stand solder to solder with our, our, our EU allies. And if the sanctions are hard, we are not the first one to, to skip them. We will we will stand ready to support as harsh sanctions as 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 EU is 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 willing to, to 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 provide. You you may recall and you know it very well that the time we joined the European Union, it was not the economy that was the main driver. It was the security, because we thought being a member of the political economical alliance will provide indirect support against hybrid influencing. And it is still valid. Whether that is enough, but it is still valid, the more, more stronger Europe and European Union will have, the better will be the Finnish, Finnish security. That's as simple as, as it is. With that, uh, Lisa, let me thank you. On behalf of the Atlantic Council and the, uh, our participants today, uh, for what you're doing, for all that you have done, and uh, express confidence, my personal confidence, but the confidence I think of many of us that uh, the uh, defense policy of Finland is in good hands with uh, you in such an important position as permanent secretary at the Ministry of Defense. Thank you, and thanks to our audience for your participation. Thank you, Leo, and, and all my friends. I will be coming to, to uh, Washington, hopefully, the first week of April. And, and if there will be any opportunity to address any audience, I stand ready, and Mari will support me with that function. Thank you very much, and have a nice day. Thank you.